Welcome to the Engage 416 live stream. I am Detective Constable Sean Garris with the Integrated Gang Prevention Task Force. Again, this is a, another episode of uh, your favorite, your favorite uh, YouTube channel uh, slash podcast um, here at the Engage 416 initiative. Uh, today's guest is Dre. Dre comes from us from the great city of Toronto. Right, Toronto. Yeah. Born and raised in Born the city of Toronto. Can you tell us where in kind of there, what kind of areas that you grew up in in the city of Toronto? I grew up on Jean Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I grew up uh, over there, and yeah, yeah, yeah cool, man. So, uh, so you you were born and raised where? Born and raised on in Toronto, mm -hmm. Jean Street specifically. You know, yep. um, not going to get into too much details where, but mm -hmm. somewhere on the Jean, and yeah, it's, it's yeah, quite a I have quite a story. Nice. So we're going to get into your story. I'm going to, so I'll give you a little bit of my background. I actually, I'm a, a 20 year, 21 year veteran of the Toronto Police Service. I've worked in, you know, in Jane, the Jane and Finch area for okay. most of my career. Um, I started off in 2002 uh, as a uniform officer there. I went back uh, after a, a brief stint at our tr Toronto Police College uh, teaching the uh, the, the cadets and uh, and uh, well it just regular police officers as well recertifying them with uh, use of force and uh, and firearms so I did that for well I also taught tactical communication but then I wanted to get back to the neighborhood and I actually went back to school took criminology uh, from the University of Guelph came back and I understood the problems that were occurring in the neighborhood uh, from a different perspective it was actually quite quite a, quite interesting for me you know at first when I came into the neighborhood it was all you know okay I want to get hired I want to drive the car fast uh, <laughs> you know I want the lights and sirens because um, it seemed like an exciting job now you know the second time around I was like nope uh, you know what I want to do? I want to understand what's going on. I want to know why this is happening and how do we mitigate it? So, uh, you know, and that's why I'm here with the Engage 416 initiative. And that's why I speak to, you know, guests like yourself, people that are in the community or have been in the community, grew up in the community and, uh, what they've experienced. Because again, I have a different experience than what you had. I've experienced it, uh, you know, the neighborhood that you're lived in as a police officer, but I didn't experience it as somebody growing up. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course the Jane, uh, street area is really, really uh, uh, infamous for uh, gang violence, uh, yeah. gun violence. Um, growing up, when was the the first time that you kind of experienced something like that? Um, first time I could say, or probably around like four or five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just seen a lot of things outside my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, people just chilling, people doing things, you know, mm -hmm. that they're not really supposed to, but that's just what we kind of grew up in. Mm -hmm. But before I start that, just want to say, not everybody on Jane Street's a, a, a criminal or a bad person. There's actually more people that are in school and doing good things with their life and doing mm -hmm. good things for the community, but we don't really get that um, shine. We don't really get that spotlight. Mm -hmm. It's mainly just the rappers and the gangsters and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. But there's really good people there. Yeah. Um, there's some yeah. really good people there. Like we yeah. had. Uh, so I don't know if you know. Uh, there's a gentleman that lived in Eddie Stone, uh, okay. Jane and Eddie Stone, which is in that area. Yeah. Uh, but his name's Steve Anderson. We had him on the show. He is the deputy mayor of uh, Shelburne, and he is a lawyer for the TTC. So there are some great stories coming out of those areas. It's just you know the media doesn't focus on those things. No, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah it's it's unfortunate. Um. Because even myself, like, I went to college, you know what I mean? I, I, I went to many high schools. Um, there's a lot of my friends right now that are in college, went to college for, went to university for criminology, becoming nurses, pediatricians, all the, all these different types of stuff. But mm -hmm. they don't really get that spotlight, you know. We, we get told that, like, you know, like, it's it's not that cool or, it's, you know, so mm -hmm. the rappers and the, and the trappers get the spotlight. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and that's what social media what, what gains attention, right? Uh, we we're attracted to violence. Like uh, you know, if you look at the UFC, right, it sells millions and millions of dollars, and that's violence, pure violence. Yeah. So when you talk about drill music, which is you know, when it, they talk a lot about violence, yeah, it sells, right? Uh, and those kids are are getting noticed by record companies because they live that authentic lifestyle. As yeah, well. and. It's really like a cry for them just to, for it's a it's a cry for them to get. It's like another way. Just like if it's not basketball, it's rapping, mm -hmm. right? It's just another way. And like majority of the people follow that way because they see the lifestyle and the money and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm out here trying to show people like there's other ways to that. 
Mm-hmm. There's other ways that you can do it. You can do it the legal way. You can do. You can go to school. You can figure out what your hobbies are and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We soon get into it, but I also box too. Yeah. So I I teach people about that stuff. Yeah. I show people. Uh, I'm a I'm a nerd. I watch <laughs> a lot. I watch a lot of YouTube on finan- financial literacy and stuff like that. Yeah. So I even teach people that bring mm-hmm. them to the bank, Scotia Bank, and and help them build get their first credit card. Mm-hmm. Help them get the um the into the stock market make make them meet the right people mm-hmm. and i just network people into with the right people basically that's awesome man yeah. that's empowering the community yeah right yeah and you're just giving back to uh, where you grew up yeah giving back to where i grew up and other places too um yeah. i also work with the city of toronto mm-hmm. parks and rec um so i work in different neighborhoods um different hoods all around the city mm-hmm. so right now i'm in east york and right now i'm like the west small area mm-hmm. and i'm just helping out helping out different communities and showing them like yo that lifestyle and ain't it, man. There's other ways to go about it. Find yeah. a hobby that you're really into. Join a club. And, yeah, find your passion yeah. the right way. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about mentorship, right? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're, uh, that's man, I and that's what I love hearing. Like, you can be a coach. You can be a, uh, a teacher. You could be a community member. And that's what I think, you know, is is so helpful in, in uh, you know, in some of these communities. You know, when um, I talk about... Um, it's a general crime theory. Okay. It talks about when people don't have self-control in their lives, where they, and it's usually so we got a plane flying through there. <laughs> I'll cut that out. <laughs> um, general crime theory is basically this is when when you don't have self-control in your life, and usually it's learned self-control. When you don't have that in your life, uh, there's a higher propensity for you to your proclivity. I think the word is to um, to commit crimes, and that's certain crimes, not all crimes. Yeah, but. Um, if you don't have guidance, because some of the, the kids in these, these neighborhoods don't have, you know, a, an intact family, one of the risk factors for gang involvement is actually poor parental supervision. Sometimes that happens because there's only one parent in the house, uh, or it's a dysfunctional family where there's alcoholics or, you know, or addicts. Yeah. Um, but um, when that happens, there's a need for mentors, yes. right? Uh, something like somebody like yourself. Yeah, um, most definitely. Like, I know a lot of people, like, in living on Jean Street, mm-hmm. um, a lot of single parent households. Mm-hmm. So the parents are working two, three jobs just to make ends meet, just to take care of the kids and the kids are there, they get bored, you know what I mean? So they go outside and some typically like people are outside may not be doing the right things and you might just join into that and get caught up, um, mm-hmm. get caught up and think that's the lifestyle, but really and truly like it, it's not. Mm -hmm. right so i'm also a motivational speaker and i go speak at high schools and middle schools and community centers um just actually this afternoon i'm going to be speaking in scarborough nice uh, with youth in trouble with the law and stuff like that and just try to motivate them the right way um and try to get get that started but Mm -hmm. trust me it's not easy it's it's not easy it's easier said than done it's and you know but yeah one at least if i get one person at least one person it'll change yeah because if if somebody wasn't able to be there for me in my situation i wouldn't be here giving back Mm -hmm. so all it takes is the right support Mm -hmm. the right positive people around you and stuff like that yeah so you're going into a school today and uh you're going to talk about gang violence or you're going to talk about the bad choices yeah i mean i talk about all the bad choices that i that i did when i was younger and stuff like that and how i was able to overcome it and so you know, you're working, you're finding these uh, fantastic ways of earning money, you know, legitimately. You've got other friends in the neighborhood that maybe not be doing that. Yeah. Um, when you're seeing them do those things, what are you thinking? Um, when I see them doing those things, um, I understand it. Mm-hmm. I understand it because we both come from the same community. We understand, like, I understand the hustle. I understand that it's, it's a lot easier. Mm-hmm. I would say, like, in my head it's kind of weak-minded mm-hmm. but at the same time i understand it um reason being is because it's a lot easier to do that than work a nine to five um you get it's more of a reward you mm-hmm. know so and it's less less time mm-hmm. and everything like that but it comes with a risk mm-hmm. it comes with a risk right high risk high reward mm-hmm. right so 
as long as they know what they're doing, mm-hmm. that is, it is a risk, mm-hmm. then I let them be because at the end of the day, they're adults, right? We yeah. all have a choice in mm-hmm. life. And if you choose to do that, that's on you, right? Mm-hmm. Just understand the consequences that can come with it. Yeah. Right. Um, but I, I wish they didn't, but I understand it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, as a police officer, sometimes in in the beginning, you don't really understand. But when you learn more about a community, you understand a little bit more and why things are happening. Of course, especially after I started researching things. But yeah. some people are dealing drugs because... They have a, they have a financial uh, situation at home where mom's not working, can't pay the pay the bills. So do you fault the kid that actually is selling drugs to get by in life and drop because he dropped out of school, but he, he's actually you know selling drugs to actually support his mom. For me, that's kind of heartbreaking. You know, you realize that you know that that's occurring. You know, he's not getting his education and as you know, and he's doing this. Um, you know, but it's he's he's trying to meet those means through an illegal action. Yeah, it's tough because uh, again, he's trying to support his family, and it, so it, you it can't fault him for that. Yeah, it becomes very tough, especially when we step away from the drugs. Now we get into like firearms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now it becomes your safety of your life, and just dealing with other people that have the same mentality of uh, of like kill or be killed mm-hmm. sort of thing so it, it, it gets very tough like i've lost a lot of friends due to gun, guns gun violence mm-hmm. um i lost a lot of family due to gun violence and mm-hmm. stuff like that uh so i trust me um i, I like it, it's it's hard yeah like i have friends um lots of friends dead Mm-hmm. I've a I've friend that got shot multiple times to confined to a wheelchair now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like having to see that every day, every other every other week, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like seeing what life is like after getting shot and you surviving it but now you carry on this PTSD and this ment and the men- you we talk about mental health and it just doesn't get better um which which is very sad. Mm-hmm. Um that's why I feel like I am a big part to the to the community, plus on top of that to other communities too because mm-hmm. I bring that different side. I bring that positive side. Mm-hmm. I've been seeing positive vibes only for like over seven years now, and and that's I was just saying that just to say it, mm-hmm. um, because I was just I just wanted to just keep a a positive mindset instead of you know because there's so much negativity you get pulled in it so fast. Yeah. So I just try to keep a positive mindset and spread it. Mm-hmm. read it um yeah and we can talk about my grandmother too also uh she worked in the uh, driftwood and shoreham neighborhood okay um w- with the city of toronto um she was a big impact over there too mm-hmm. so you know what i mean i'm just carrying on the the legacy my grandma passed away last year oh, sorry, um yeah. due to a stroke mm-hmm. and uh yeah then she's she's been with she's been with me ever since you've had a great role model then i have yeah um as I said, growing up, my life was pretty rough. Um, I got kicked out at 14. Um, so, and I went to five different high schools, mm-hmm. right? So, so, you know, you're saying you get kicked out of five different high schools. It's got to be pretty tough on you. You start to think, okay, well, I'm not wanted at these schools. Or, you know, what, what changes your mindset to, to stick, stick at it? Um, you must have had, it, had something. You're, you're, you're getting kicked out for reasons, but then you must yeah. have had this, you know, hey, smarten up. I got to. Yeah, I got I got kicked out of a few few high schools, not mm-hmm. all of them, but mm-hmm. um, what really like kind of made me help it was just the positive people that were surrounding me. Yeah. And and I and I, as I said before, I got kicked out at fourteen, so I got into foster cares and group homes, mm-hmm. right? So and now I'm in different neighborhoods, and I'm in sometimes I'm in the suburbs, mm-hmm. right? So I got to see what life is like outside of the hood, right? So I really I really just yeah Mm. you know um you say you got to see life outside the hood there's a lot of kids in these neighborhoods that don't get out and it's you know it's kind of shocking to hear but uh, you know when we were did we did 30 gang prevention town halls meetings in the city's lowest equitable and highest gang packed neighborhoods and one of the things that came out from the community is that you know there's kids in the community that haven't seen um anywhere outside of their neighborhood They're, they're either afraid to leave their neighborhood because of collateral damage in regards to ga- gang violence, um, or they just they just go to work A and B, you know, back and forth, and you know they don't these kids don't get out. I actually had a kid when I was working uh, in thirty one division. I brought him out 
uh, of the community downtown Toronto. He'd never seen the CN Tower. His parents had never been downtown, and they'd lived in the city for 20 years, which kind of shocked me. Yeah. Um, but that's just something that's occurring in the neighbor. Your, the neighborhood that you lived in, and you're talking about. You talked about you've seen your friend shot. You're seeing, you know, uh, you know, you know, murders like family yeah. members and stuff like that. It's really hard as an outsider to really understand that, and that's why I'm glad you're here to kind of. You know, give yeah. us a, that perspective. Like you, you see, it's 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 trust me, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, because you would think like, okay, we're doing barbecues and we're doing barbecues in the hood. You know, man, them are man, them are are giving out a bunch of burgers and hot dogs and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, but you would think that we wouldn't try to expand it. Mm-hmm. Try to expand and go to different neighborhoods, mm-hmm. and it's hard to do that when you live in a gang environment, gang like affiliated neighborhood, and you try to reach out. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of neighborhoods will try to accept that, or, mm-hmm. or it's just it's just a caution thing too, yeah. right? But this is where I come in, and I try to expand, and I try to let these guys know, like, yo, like there's more to there's more to the hood than the hood. Like, mm-hmm. we'll get go downtown, and I even expand even more. I'm like, travel. to see different provinces. Mm-hmm. I just came back from Alberta. Yeah. Right? It's beautiful over there. Yeah. I actually used to work over there, too. So, like, yeah. I know, like, I am the guy that travels around. I used to call myself back in the days Mr. Tour Around Canada. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> so, like, you know, shout out Bokes, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I got that from him. But, yeah. like, like, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. You gotta see, to, you gotta see more to be more. Right? Mm-hmm. And, that's just that's just all man like you just it's it's very difficult though. i really like that uh see more to be more yeah um, you know it's that perceived um i guess um opportunities perceived opportunities if you don't have any perceived opportunities you only go to what you know yeah and you stay in what you know yeah. and people are afraid to venture out you know yeah. outside their community i used to like um here's another story i when i was when i was in college i went to culinary school oh. all right so then i used to bring different foods um because we had a class called foods of the world mm-hmm. right and i used to bring different foods and different breads and different sweets mm-hmm. um desserts and stuff like that to the, back to the community mm-hmm. and make them try it out some of them would try it. Some of them would be close minded. It, it was it was just very it was very it was very funny to see. But like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just it's just how I was able to be open minded and I try to expand their knowledge and their open mindedness and mm-hmm. try to expand it. Um, all you could do is just try. You know, hope for the best mm-hmm. at the end of the day for everybody else. I think that's what you're doing, right? You're trying to open these kids' minds, even with your talks that you're doing. Yeah. You know, not you're doing it through food that that instance, yeah. but it's the other thing too. Is you're trying to say, hey, kids, like there is other Another options. ways. There is other ways. I tell I tell everybody that too. Like at the end of the day, I'm not gonna get like the reality of things. I'm not gonna get everybody. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna change everybody's opinion. Like I've talked to other people where they said like I'm too deep in the streets. I, I can't do it. You know what I mean? I'm like, I understand it, right? It, it's sad, but I understand it. But I try to help the younger people and the younger crowd that's that not too deep in it yet. Mm-hmm. Try to be like, yo, what well, are you doing? Like, you know? Explain to uh, explain to me just what deep in the streets, what does that mean? I know what deep, it means just for the viewers. That, I would yeah. say when I deep in the streets, you could basically mean like when you're... Um, tapped in with the gang violence and stuff like that mm-hmm. and people know you mm-hmm. maybe you're you're a well-known rapper or something like that simple as that you know? yeah you know what that's one of the things uh that i've i've noticed like for it would be really hard for a gang member that's really involved in the drill music scene to exit because his face is plastered all over youtube yeah. now and he's affiliated him with a name himself with a neighborhood so there's other rival gang members yeah. that are out there that are always looking for them so even if that youtube video gets old it's still there still yeah there. that's why you, that's why i tell people you got to be careful when you when you post up on social media because mm-hmm. it's always there um it's that that is very hard very very hard but one thing i can say is just um proceed with caution when you're when it comes to that type of stuff that Mm -hmm. lifestyle you picked it and you just have to kind of take whatever that comes with it Mm -hmm. um it's unfortunate but it is what it is Mm -hmm. um yeah 
Yeah, yeah. that's it, man. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's sad. Yeah. I think it, it, I Amy, mean, social media has made our lives differently. I grew up without so- social media. Yeah. Uh, for you kids growing up, uh, and for the kids younger that are are growing up in this, I mean, it's it is so dangerous. I mean, it's there's so yeah. there's good things about it as well. Yeah. But it, if it's utilized in, and we don't know the repercussions of our actions sometimes. Yeah, and the thing about it is, is that when it comes to social media, mm-hmm. everybody wants um, fast instant gratification that's mm-hmm. what everybody wants everybody sees that person with stacks of money and and they're like oh, we don't have it we're still in the hood we we barely have you know money for like you know um mm-hmm. domino's pizza or something yeah. like you know what i mean like so how do we get that okay we're gonna get the fast way right but mm-hmm. fast 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 money comes with fast problems huh? so, yeah and you so. know it's some of those videos i mean i i can speak to to some of the videos that i've seen some of the kids that i was you know that that were in my neighborhoods you know they're they're posting and they're flexing you know with uh, stacks of money well you know they still live in the neighborhood yeah. that money is either a prop or it's uh belongs to you know many people and yeah they, yeah. yeah exactly and plus the look of it too you're gonna you gotta also realize the envy is real too mm-hmm. right the envy is really real and when it comes to down to the streets the, the streets has no loyalty the mm-hmm. streets has no loyalty and that's why i try to tell these guys try to tell these kids like this stuff is not this stuff is not it is what it is like it, it's not what it looks like on tv or youtube it's, it's it's the streets isn't for anybody basically but if you choose it by all means do your thing mm-hmm. right um, I actually have a friend right now in jail, and mm-hmm. and he calls me, mm-hmm. right. So I make him talk to the talk to the boys that I that I be working with sometimes, and just let them have a little five minute conversation. Mm-hmm. Let them know like he's been in there for the rest of like for majority of his twenties, mm-hmm. um, and it's not it's not what it looks like on TV or stuff like that. Jail's not fun. It's bored. You're not doing nothing with your life. You're mm-hmm. not making money. So I try to help youth like that too show them what the real life is you want to be a gangster you want to do that all right come talk to my friend look yeah. let him talk to you tell you what jail is really like because it isn't what it yeah. seems like yeah and the, yeah Go ahead. The, um the thing about me i got a family north side gene mm-hmm. and south side gene mm-hmm. right so and i already know the, the the beef conflicts with that and stuff like that but i stay out of it mm-hmm. and um growing up when I my grandma was over there, yeah, I used to be over there on the parks and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, you won't catch me over there. That's mm-hmm. just a, I love my life, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's it's crazy. It's sad, but you mm-hmm. know, what I mean, we gotta do better as a as a unit, as a as a street, as a hood. Like you know, what I mean, just you know. But yeah. when it's when it when it gets too deep, blood gets shed from yeah. other from other people and stuff like that. It's yeah. it's hard. It's it's hard it's easier said than done right? yeah one of the things that we've done as a police service to help that uh that community out we've ran this i don't know if you've heard of it but this safe play initiative yeah. and our neighborhood officers actually go into shoreham court and they go three times a week they spend an hour to two hours and they bring in grassroots organizations they bring in uh businesses we've had toronto bat or brampton batman in there with his okay. with his with his batmobile <laughs> uh the star wars uh uh uh, characters Darth Vader and, and Stormtroopers have all came in there as well but they're, the police officers are playing games there's doing different functions uh, and what it's done is actually given the kids in the the opportunity to play at the park to um, go to the splash pad yeah. and the parents not to be afraid because the yeah. police officers are there and it from my understanding um, from my boss when I was there Sergeant Dave Haynes He's he said that the stats coming out of that it had actually stopped gang violence thirty uh, percent in those time time frames, yeah. which was hap- which is great. But again, prior to that, that wasn't happening when you were there. Yeah, um, yeah, it's 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 I I don't even know. It's it's sad. But yeah. It's sad, but it is what it is. It's it's like that in many different communities. Like me, I got brothers and stuff like that. So out there in the east, then mm-hmm. it's the same way like that too, right? So. Mm-hmm. You know, you just all you got to do is just focus on yourself Mm -hmm. and do what you have to do and find hobbies and try to meet new people outside your neighborhood and Mm -hmm. try to gather open mind. Yeah. um, And meet new meet meet new people, try new things. Yeah. So let's say you got a kid. He's on the cusp of getting involved with a gang. How do you approach talking to that kid? Uh, What's the conversation you have with him? Me, typically, I'd be like, um, 
depending on what grade he is and mm-hmm. how old he is, I try to figure out what's his goals and ambitions and stuff like that mm-hmm. and what he wants to do in life. And I show him the reality since I'm older than him. I show him the reality of the streets. Um, and yeah, it's very, it's very relatable because I'm in the hood, mm-hmm. right? I know what it's like just because you see me doing motivational speaking and stuff like that. Now doesn't mean like my life is all sweet and dandy. Mm-hmm. I'm still out here. I know what the streets is like. I know how it, how it goes and stuff like that. It's not, it's not easy, right? I could talk my gums out, mm-hmm. right? But at the end of the day, he still needs to get home. Mm-hmm. He still needs to, he still needs to put food on his table. He still needs to help his family, mm-hmm. right? So it's easier said than done. As long as I give him that, that, suggestion and th- that um example mm-hmm. like look at me like i was almost in your path i yeah. was almost in the streets yeah. but i chose a complete different route mm-hmm. right yeah. um and not a lot of kids have my story about yeah. being kicked out at 14 and going into foster care and stuff like that so they grow up they grow up in um in even worse situations because i was just talking with this like with another friend and he was just letting me know like yeah when you left the the hood was just getting shot up like crazy and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and people are running from bullets and stuff like that like you know what i mean like it gets serious to the point where when you look at me talk it's just like we get it but like you weren't really there at that certain moment when things were really popping off so Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but I really just try to tell them, like, yo, there's another way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just be strong, and there's another way. You know, the streets isn't what it is. The streets has no loyalty, Mm -hmm. right? So it's either you choose what you want to do or choose the right right route. It's harder. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is, but it'll build you character, Yeah. right? So that's why I always suggest trying different jobs trying different hobbies activities and stuff like that getting out your community and meeting new friends and stuff like that just Mm -hmm. trying to see the outside of the hood because Mm -hmm. a lot of people just stick to the hood and what's around them you know what i mean people don't even leave the city you know what i mean i I was in muskoka for the whole summer i was in muskoka i was i was experiencing new things i was meeting new people Mm -hmm. right that's it yeah i mean you know i'm listening to you talk and I always equate things to athletics. I'm a, well, I've, I've wrestled my entire, entire life. I started coaching as well. So, you know, and I, the reason I coached because I had all that experience, you know, in yeah. my sport of wrestling. So I could pass that on to my athletes and make them succeed. And that's as a coach, that's what you want to do. As you're talking here, I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing the parallels, how you, you know, you were, you were in these areas. You were experiencing everything that these kids are, are experiencing. And then now you're at the point where, like, you're the coach. You're, the, you're there. You're, saying yeah. you're, you're trying to – because every coach wants to inspire their athlete to be successful. Yeah. Right? They, wanna, they want them to succeed. They want them to win the championship. And you're pointing out these various skills or options for these kids, kind of like a coach would be, like, you know, pointing out different moves or different, yeah. you know, different drills to, yeah. to help them succeed. Right. Yeah, I always tell people, like, you got to think long term, not short term, mm-hmm. right? So the end goal is to make it out the hood and mm-hmm. be successful, mm-hmm. right? But if you try to dabble into the streets, mm-hmm. how long could you go for that? How yeah. long could you do that? How long could you do that? Mm-hmm. Like, I have I have young kids telling me right now, like, um, F school and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, okay, so F school, what's the next step? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Some people say they're gonna jump in the streets and make it trap and make it become a millionaire. That doesn't happen. That that rarely happens. That mm-hmm. rarely happens. Right. I have people telling me that they're gonna like jump into different uh different trades and stuff like that. I'm like, see, that's a good path. That's mm-hmm. that's something. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you need your high school diploma, bro. Mm-hmm. You need you need that. that's something that's basic. That yeah. just get your high school. To, just finish it, bro. Just finish it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of the things, and you might be interested in this, uh, there's a book, it's called uh, Gang Leader for a Day. It was written by a gentleman by the name of Sadir Vankatesh. Mm-hmm. He actually um, he lived in the Chicago area. He went to the University of Chicago. He was doing his graduate work there, and he wanted to go into this community and figure out you know, like what was causing the issues. So he took this survey, and he went into this neighborhood, and of course, very similar neighborhoods to like Jane and Finch, uh, and he goes walking with these papers, and he hands these papers out, and then he gives them to a stairwell, and he gets... He gets <laughs> basically uh, stopped by a group of kids, and they're in a gang, mm-hmm. and they hold him hostage uh, in this stairwell for the entire night. 
And the gang leader comes later on that, that night, he checks in on them because he's collecting money from them and whatnot. And uh, he says, if you, you know, like, so he interviews him because they think he's a rival gang member. Mm-hmm. They're really going to kill him that night. Um, but they, they interview him and the gang leader interviews him and he looks at the survey and he just laughs at him. He goes, you know what, to, to, to understand us, you need to live here. He actually comes back. Um, you know, he, they let him go. He comes back yeah. the next day the next day, the next week, 10 years. At the end of the 10 years, they trust him so much that they actually give him the financial records of the, the, the books of the gang for the drug, drug dealing. They, there was actually, oh, wow. there there was some, some records kept. And what they found when they did the analysis of the, the funding is that the street level drug dealers, the trappers, um, they, you know, so all, all the money would trickle up because you'd have to restock, right? Yep. Um, it would trickle upwards. But the guys at the, at the very low end, they made in they made the equivalent to a McDonald's salary. <laughs> so, and, and, and I'm talking about yearly. So if you were to deal drugs for a year and break it down, like you may get like $1,000 one week, but if you break it down and maybe kind of equated it to an hourly job, yeah. you're only making, and I'm not knocking McDonald's because it's a yeah. good program there, but you're making the same amount of money as uh, an individual that was that would be employed at McDonald's, yeah. right? And that employment at McDonald's, one, is probably one of the best uh, employment programs within you know the world and it's the, there's upward mobility with a uh, low-level drug drug dealer there's nowhere upward mobility because there's always a guy at the top and we have to wait till the guy at the top gets murdered killed or you know doesn't yeah. want to do it anymore right yeah. so the to going up it's really t- tough to do so when you said um you know there's no money in it you know yeah. Uh, and I go on TikTok and I say that. Yeah. And I can tell you the the, the comments, the comments <laughs> I get, man. You gotta come at me hard. You, you gotta understand, like yeah. in Toronto, mm-hmm. where where it's very prideful. Yeah. It's very prideful. You can't mm-hmm. tell me that I'm not gonna become a millionaire. Yeah. You can't tell me that I'm not gonna trap my way to become a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Who are you? You're not from the hood. You don't yeah. even know. You're not. You don't even understand what we go through. Yeah. Like who are you? I got a lot of people. Um, when I, cause I'm also becoming a police officer. I'm on the route to become a police officer. Awesome. So imagine that mm-hmm. black guy from the hood <laughs> trying to become a police officer yeah. from Jane street, everything like, you know what yeah. I mean? So like it, they look, they, it's, it's a, it's a very weird, but you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like that's why when you grow up in a neighborhood and you have that sort of respect and stuff like that, people and people understand why mm-hmm. you're doing certain things. Yep. They won't bother you too much. They may make a little jokes here and there. Yeah. Um, but when they understand that you're doing it for the right reason and stuff like that, mm-hmm. trying to help out different communities in the hood mm-hmm. and trying to trying to just help out and just show them there's another route to it. Not to say that you have to become a police officer just like what I'm trying to become. Mm-hmm. No, it just there's other ways to do it. There's different options. There's different options. There's, there's resources. You got, I always tell people we are in Canada. This is a first world country. Mm-hmm. We have resources. Mm-hmm. Use them. Well, I think there's a, you know, a feeling in, in some of these neighborhoods where, you know, I'm from this neighborhood. I'm, I'm not going to get out. My life yeah. is, my life is done. I'm regulated to this area. Uh, and especially if you don't see outside. Yeah, right? e- exactly. And, the victim mentality when it comes to living in the hood, oh, the police officers are getting at us because we're black and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, tr- a lot of traumatic events that even make the people in the hood and not like the police and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, back in the days when Tav was available, when Tav was out there, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They used to harass kids a lot. I used to see it with my own eyes and stuff like that. You know, um, that that's what so we learned that from young and then growing up we just started hating cops and police and stuff mm-hmm. like that i mean the neighborhood officers are are, are a replacement for that program yeah. uh, i mean i was a neighborhood officer and tell you the truth it's a different way of operating it's an amazing way of getting into the community starting programs I, you know i taught a wrestling program at westview okay. when i was there um but because you're a neighborhood officer you're n- you, you're not tied to a radio and there's an expectation of you creating programs instead of making arrests exactly. now. so, uh, exactly. so you're actually become you, you know and it's really tough when there's something bad that happens to the community that causes the community not to trust the police officer um you know it, it's tough to get over as a community and we have to as police officers have to work you know harder and harder and for you to be able to come into the policing world 
you know, which is awesome. I'm glad that you're aspiring to, to do that. You. Um, you know, you'll be able to kind of shed a light that, you know, like, listen, there's bad incidents that happen, but not every cop is bad. I have had a different experience and there, you know, I, I, and then, you know, you, yeah, you're, you want to change things. Yeah, exactly. And you want to change perspectives, which I think that's why you're taking on the job. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I have a friend that actually grew up it in the grassways, and he, uh, okay. I trained him as a as a as a, a new hire. Okay. Uh, I was his coach officer. So I mean, there are kids that come from that community that are becoming police officers. Yeah. But there are again, you talk about negative stigmatism uh, of police. Um, so it's not a job that everybody wants to aspire to from from those neighborhoods because there's a hatred towards cops. yeah there is yeah mm -hmm. i i had um like a lot of a lot of people like laugh about it and stuff like that mm -hmm. um about me coming a police officer and stuff mm -hmm. like that but then there's a on the other side there's a lot of people in my neighborhood that really know me mm -hmm. and then really like people that really know me that really respect what i'm doing because I'm not just becoming a police officer for the wrong reasons to be a dirty cop or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm really coming to help out different communities and stuff like that. And they really see it because I do it even right now. Mm -hmm. It's motivational speaking. And even before motivational speaking, I was out here motivating other youth and stuff like that. Just as, as, as they seen the, the struggle I went through just to even go to school. Mm -hmm. I used to take, I used to take the bus, the 35 Jane bus mm -hmm. and go to York university and to catch a Brampton bus and then go all the way to school in Brampton mm -hmm. just to finish grade grade um, grade 11 and 12 mm -hmm. right so they seen my my hunger for success right I was the first person in my neighborhood to like have a car and have my license at 16 mm -hmm. you know so that showed them like holy like if, if Dre could do it like we could do it too right mm -hmm. so like certain things like that like you know I'd be motivating I've been been doing this stuff. I'm just more getting more public with it now, but mm. trust me, I'm just that's all I'm trying to do, man. Yeah, that's you know, it. I was just talking to uh, Jim Richardson. I was thinking, I was told you earlier uh, before the, we started the podcast. He's a University of Michigan swim coach, yeah. and we were talking about how teammates, um, you know, that the ones that led by example, the one those are the kids that actually inspire other kids to achieve their goals in life, and that's exactly what you're doing. I think yeah. when you're in these communities, you're basically the team their teammate and saying hey listen abc is available i did it yeah. come along with me yeah um yeah i see yeah certain things like that like even for like today i was even i was even let him know like i'm gonna go speak with uh i'm going to the police station right now and i'm about to <laughs> about to go do a podcast yeah, they're looking yeah. at me like what like yeah. you know what i mean that's crazy but they always know like Whatever I'm doing is with the good of the goodness of my heart, so I'm not mm -hmm. out here trying to, you know, rat out mandem or something like yeah. that. But like yep. I'm out here trying to just motivate youth and make sure they choose the right path. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did you tell him yeah. you're doing the podcast with yeah. Mr. Clean? I, I I didn't say I didn't say <laughs> I didn't say who. I just told him I'm heading oh, out yeah. to the to the police station. Yeah. You know, I got a, a, a nickname yeah. in uh, South South Jane. Yeah, uh, Mr. Clean. They Mr. Clean, me. eh? Mr. Clean. Okay, so. shout, shout, South Jane, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I and you know what? It was actually because we were doing a lot of work. We were taking some of the drug dealers out of the that area, right? Uh, some of the drug dealers actually were calling me names they thought mm -hmm. being bold and you know and calling me mr clean was gonna hurt my feelings yeah and it actually happened one um one day where a community member and i guess they were referring to me behind my back as mr clean right yeah. a community member actually uh you know um you know was talking to me and then they let it slip they called me mr clean yeah. and i just started laughing and he's and he was he apologize right yeah. like, no 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 don't worry about it it's okay I, i'm okay with that <laughs> you know i just laughed and then i just drove back uh maybe two or three weeks ago and drove up into the same plaza and i rolled down the window and there's a group of uh guys that were hanging out at the same plaza and they go mr clean what's going on uh, <laughs> so, yeah so yeah you're doing the the podcast with mr clean yeah, okay so. okay shout out mr clean man <laughs> you know who, who yeah. said that the south side gene guys yeah yeah shout out to those guys yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny um yeah. but yeah i did a lot of work in the grassways which is not even there anymore okay. was, yeah i know I, it, they're changing it up now it's crazy they they took they took it away man that's yeah. crazy yeah yeah have you seen the new plans to it um, I think it's going to be either a condominium or your university or something yeah, like that. Uh, from what I understand, they're going to put in some 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 housing. They're going to mix it up with uh, 
condo. I think they call it gentrification. Gentrification, definitely. But um, there's going to be a community center there as well. Oh, really? It's going to be instead of just a you know because the connections was connected. It was yeah. a crazy little maze. Yeah. Now they're going to have just kind of streets going through, like parallel streets going through. Oh, instead, wow. of, instead of a like a, a, a housing complex like that, it's going to be like you know different. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 I've seen the plans. I don't know if those are still in place because I see I saw it a while back, but. Yeah. Um, See, you yeah. see, for those type of situations, like, I felt sorry for the community because now their whole community that they were born and raised in is gone, demolished, mm-hmm. just for gentrification, just for new incomers to come and take over their take over their land. And mm-hmm. it sucks now because as they're building in community centers and condos, now the rent is going to go up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. People are already struggling, inflation's yeah. up. See, not a lot of people take into consideration, builders don't really take that into consideration um, of the community, mm-hmm. which is, it, which sucks. At the end of the day, it is a business, mm-hmm. right? But it, it ruins a lot of lives. Now you're, you're endangering their kids into different hoods and stuff like that because yeah. they got to move somewhere. Well, that's, so if, if they're going in from one hood to another and maybe that hood is not good with them, now that's tr- des- um, detrimental for for the kid and stuff like that so and then it makes him want to you know even get more money to to get the hell out of there you know what i mean so it it gets very tricky controversial and stuff like that Mm -hmm. but yeah man yeah you know the people don't think about you know the gang involvement and how it affects uh, these people that are uprooted from their homes and then they're told they have to move to other neighbors because Toronto housing will try to place them in other places yeah. in, in different neighborhoods to, to yeah. help them out. Yeah. But then they have to tell Toronto housing that, you know, well, my kids associated with his neighborhood, we can't go to yeah. this neighborhood. And, and it's not even like gang members either. It's good kids. that just want to go to college, university, high school, just want to just do them. And they're just getting sunk into that mm-hmm. because now a new kid's coming into a neighborhood that they don't really see. They ask them where they're from. And then, you know, mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, that's it. Like, oh, you're from that hood? Then we don't mess with that hood. But yeah. now you're moved into their community. So now you have to, like, walk with a head on your shoulder. You know what I mean? Like, just, you have to, you know, just, it's 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 scary. It's yeah. scary. You have to be be cautious on any shootings, drive-bys. Now, any people run into your house, they know where you live. And you know what I mean? Your family, like, all these different type of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But. There is a yeah. huge stress that I don't think a lot of people understand. People that don't live in these neighborhoods, they don't understand the actual stress that is occurring to you know to families, to people yeah. in those neighborhoods that live there. You're talking about yeah. you know just moving in a gang impacted neighborhood from another neighborhood yeah. and having to look over your shoulder because just because of where you live, not yeah. because you're you, maybe you're not gang affiliated, but you still have to look over your shoulder because you now you're living in a distant na- neighborhood. Yeah. Is, yeah. I, it's crazy. I be talking to people that grew up in like the suburbs and stuff like that Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like what they think what we go through is like crazy insane and like it may be just around the corner from them and they're like in such a bubble where they don't even realize that just 15 minute drive and and yeah Mm -hmm. these these things are happening shootings are happening people are dying families are losing babies kids you know what i mean like all these different kids are having kids like Mm -hmm. all these crazy stuff you know what i mean and just it's 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 sad but that's what that's i always tell people there's another way to life and that should be your motivation to get out Mm -hmm. you know what i mean work get your the best education that you can we're in canada you can do that and try to get the best job and try to make it out you Mm -hmm. know that's how that's how we could do i'm still going through it right now i'm trying to get out the hood and stuff like that but i have that mentality that i can never give up Mm -hmm. and just keep striving keep going and if you surround yourself with positive people, positive stuff will happen. Yeah. If you surround yourself with uh, five five bums, you'll become the six. If you surround yourself with the uh, five millionaires, you'll become the six. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. That's the mentality I try to teach people. Yeah. Um, but it's easier said than done. Surround yourself with positive people. Surround yourself with positive people. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, what you're doing, man, is commendable. Uh, like, And again, I mean we need more individuals like yourself going into these communities, being coming mentors and being able to show them these kids the way, because again, you know, when these opportunities are blocked, whether it's through school, maybe these kids aren't, aren't able to, you know, achieve this, you know, the, 
you know, gra- graduate, you got to be able to show them different options because yeah. the street is not just the only option. There are yeah, other options. there is definitely other options, and and there's a lot of people that move to the suburbs too, mm-hmm. and they still have that hood mentality and stuff like that. Um, but I always tell them like, now you're in a new, now you're in a new community, now you're in the suburbs, yeah. and you could do, you could strive for greatness now without mm-hmm. even having to worry about. Like shootings in your neighborhood and stuff like that, and you have less distractions now. Mm-hmm. Just keep grinding, keep keep striving. Yeah, I have a lot of friends that move to the suburban communities yeah. and are still having that mindset of the hood mentality. But I'm, I let them know, like, yo, you're in a better place now. Take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Same way how I went to, I I left um, I left I got kicked out of my house and I went to the suburbs, um, and I just utilized that and met new met great people and stuff like that. And it helped me for who I am today. So that's yeah. awesome. You know, you've got the end goal, right? Like in the athletics, we have an end goal. You want to be an Olympic champion or you want to be a national champion. Your goal is to get out of the neighborhood, yeah. right? And you to accomplish those goals, you have to have incremental goals before that. The smaller yeah, the goals. Small the, goals. Yeah, the small goals. Yeah, small goals. You always, um, I always say, like, celebrate the small goals because that's just momentum. Mm-hmm. That's momentum, right? So. Yeah, man, that's a, that's that's all I do, man. Yeah, it's like grit, right? You've got yeah. the grit. You you're yeah. grinding it out, yeah. grinding it out, and you're never stopping. You got this perseverance. Well, yeah, you know, life throws you curveballs, right? Yeah, it, 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 this it's full of evil and, and and whatnot. Yeah, but it's up to us to make the the decision to to carry on. I be on Instagram all the time, and I just be letting people know, like I have a saying, like stay focused, my G. Yeah. Right. Stay focused. You know what I mean? I always tell people stay focused. You know what I mean? And think long term, not short term. Right. That's all. That's all. I did. Just surround yourself with the right um, positive people, mm-hmm. positive minded people. And just you could do it. You know, yeah. it's going to take time. Nothing comes. Nothing comes easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it takes hard work and dedication. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. That's it. And it's so rewarding at the end when you accomplish something the way you and you can look back and say, I did this. Yeah. You know what? Uh Dre, I want to thank you for coming on the show, man. Actually, yeah. before we go, I want to talk about your boxing, man. You talked a little bit about that. Hey. You boxed with a friend of mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, How did you get into that? Okay, so I started off probably like when I was in foster care, mm-hmm. I did kick. I started off with kickboxing, mm-hmm. uh, just something to do. You know, I had a lot of anger and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I I tried it out. I tried it out for a bit, um, and then I just started. Just I tried it out for a bit, and then I just like you know what. I got distracted with something else. I think it was the girls just chasing girls or something like that. You know what I mean? I got distracted with the girls and stuff like that. Girls do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got distracted with that. But then I eventually went back into it because yeah. I got kicked. Um, when I went back home now, because yeah. I went from foster care back to back to the hood. Yeah. And then I ended up getting in trouble, you know, and I ended up getting kicked out again. Mm-hmm. Go live, go, I went to go live in the East End. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just like, you know what? I see a kickboxing place down the street, so let me just try it out. So I tried out kickboxing for about almost a year mm-hmm. at Bazooka Kickboxing in Scarborough. Yep. And then after that, um, I left and went to Muskoka because mm-hmm. I was working at, in Muskoka. So I stopped boxing. And then just before, like just during the pandemic, actually, mm-hmm. I started back about, call it like beginning of 2020 mm-hmm. um, at this place called Fearless Boxing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so shout out to Mo. Shout out to Mo, man. Yeah. Shout that's my guy, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you know, I I was boxing there yeah. ever since and yeah, uh, schedule's been busy now, but I go whenever I can. That's awesome. Yeah. I even brought my boxing glove, you know. There you go. You're not going to hit me, are you? Nah, nah, I got you. No <laughs> worry, no worry. No worry. But yeah, man, and I met great people there. Like mm-hmm. that's what I tell people, like just 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 find a hobby or something and just you'll end up finding like-minded people once Mm -hmm. you find like-minded people you're you're gonna be more eager to go back Mm -hmm. and most of the time these people are not in your hood Mm -hmm. so try to meet new people and find activities that will make you happy and keep you healthy and yeah Mm -hmm. it's uh, health is wealth Yeah, yeah that's awesome well, Dre, again, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, man. It's thank been a you. blast. Um, you know, uh, 
so before I let you go, your social media accounts, can you give us a, a shout out with them? So yeah. Like- so my Instagram is at number six, B O I I underscore Dre, D R E. Um, and I, have, I also have a website, www.drespeaks.ca. Mm-hmm. www.drespeaks.ca. Check me out. Yeah, and so that's how you got to do the motivational speaking? Yeah, oh, I started off doing the motivational speaking through um, a, my principal, my old principal. So okay. when I was in that school, she was a uh, guidance counselor, mm-hmm. and she got she made it up to a uh, vice principal now, so she's a vice principal. And she always been, like, you know, like, letting me know, like, how traumatic my story is yeah. and stuff like that. And it's, it's something to talk about because there's a lot of kids that go through the same situation, okay. whether it comes to foster care, whether it comes to um, just being lost in life and mm-hmm. growing up in a uh, lower income neighborhood on Jane Street and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it was very relatable for a lot of youth to, to pick up on and stuff like that yeah. and how I started from the bottom and I'm making my way towards the top and stuff like that mm-hmm. and yeah and ever since then it just went from Peel District School Board to Toronto District School Board mm-hmm. now I soon get into Durham Catholic now I soon get into just different school boards and stuff like that yep. and then I also um, work with the City of Toronto too mm-hmm. so certain members hook me up with certain um, certain community centers in Scarborough and, and Brampton and stuff like that so I'll be speaking with youth in trouble with the law and stuff like that mm-hmm. and I'm trying to make my way towards getting into like youth facility centers like the Roy and stuff like that mm-hmm. speaking with adults too speaking with uh colleges mm-hmm. and university and making them understand like wh- how how it feels and what what we can do to change mm-hmm. and stuff like that yeah, yeah. awesome that is uh, amazing but guys and girls if you want uh to get this young man on uh, at a, your podcast or out speaking to um uh to your at your events um, you can either contact me through my social media or you can do it through Jay's who or Dre's yeah. who just uh, put his in there and what I'll do as well is I'll put them on some of our um, uh, Instagram posts as well okay perfect all right man perfect. thank you so much thank you all right. All right.